Number 10. Jennifer William Frangie. When Jennifer William Frangie saw a dog sitting in a car in a Massachusetts parking lot on a hot day, she was mortified. She waited to see if the animal's owner would return. The windows were lowered just a few inches, and she was concerned about the pet's safety due to the extraordinarily hot temperatures that day. After keeping an eye on the pup for 40 minutes, William Frangie decided that she had waited for long enough. She opened the car door to give the dog some relief and stayed with the canine until its guardian returned to the vehicle with her husband and child. The pet's owner was less than thankful for the woman's kind and concerned actions and was quite angry at William Frangie for opening her car without permission. A loud fight erupted between the two women, while the dog's owner and her partner argued that the animal was only soaking wet because he had gone swimming that day, not from the hot and humid conditions he was suffering in. The couple also blamed William Frangie's intervention as the reason the visibly distressed dog was shaking. Viral footage of the bizarre interaction shows both women threatening to call the police on each other before the altercation eventually diffuses. In the end, both parties voluntarily went separate ways without any officers present. Number 9. Brandon Zioski In October 2020, 39-year-old Brandon Zioski found an injured bird along the National Seashore in Provincetown, Massachusetts. He wrapped the animal in a sweatshirt and drove until he saw a police car sitting outside a local pharmacy. The good civilian approached officer Thomas Radzik and asked if he'd summon animal control to the scene to help. Radzik followed Sioski to his vehicle to see the wounded bird, but a 12-gauge shotgun caught the officer's eye first. He asked Sioski to show his license to carry, but Sioski said he had left it at home and didn't have it on him at the time. When Radzik ran the man's name through the state's database, he learned that the license had expired almost a year earlier, which meant that he was illegally in possession of a gun and ammunition. Zioski's father had the proper license, so he took the firearm and ammo. In the meantime, police charged Zioski with improper storing of a firearm and possession of ammunition without a firearms identification card, which are misdemeanors, and carrying a firearm without a license, which is a felony. The injured bird was taken to a wildlife rehabilitation center, but its condition deteriorated and veterinarians were forced to euthanize it. It's unclear how Zioski's case turned out, but hopefully he was able to put the incident behind him without any lasting consequences, especially since he had the best of intentions when he got in trouble. Number 8. Laura Morand Laura Morand was working as a public school teacher in Cincinnati, Ohio, when she felt sympathetic toward a student who came from a troubled background and took him in. His father had died tragically, and Morand eventually gained custody of the child. By the time he turned 19 last year, he only lived with her occasionally, and he had started to get into some trouble with drugs. One day in late 2021, police carried out a search warrant on Morand's house. They found over 30 grams of either heroin, fentanyl, or a combination of the two drugs. Prosecutor David Wood said that the illicit stash was in plain view when the officers went inside the home. Morand was taken into custody on suspicion of drug trafficking and was put on paid leave from her job the next day. Her defense attorney, Mark Crombine, contended that the drugs belonged to the young man she had taken in out of the kindness of her heart, and that this is truly an example of how no good deed goes unpunished. He further explained that the officers executing the search warrant described Morand as the most clueless person that they'd ever met, if what she was saying about not knowing anything about the drugs is true. At his client's bond hearing, Crombine described the statement as a compliment and clarified that Morand isn't and has never been into drugs and doesn't have knowledge of those types of things. A judge released the school teacher on her own recognizance. It's unclear whether the mix-up over who was responsible for the drugs has been sorted out or where the case currently stands. Number 7. Keith Haygood Keith Haygood was waiting at New York City's Grand Central Terminal recently to catch a subway home from work when he saw a woman being verbally assaulted. 
He later told local station KRDO that a man had approached the victim and was yelling and waving his arms in her face as if he was about to hit her. Concerned for the woman's well-being, Haygood intervened by physically putting himself between her and the man who was verbally assaulting her. He dialed 911, and while he spoke to dispatchers, the man physically attacked him. The next thing Haygood remembered was being in an ambulance, according to KRDO. He ended up hospitalized with numerous injuries, including a cranial brain bleed, multiple head lacerations, a broken jaw, and numerous orbital bone fractures. Haygood's sister, Mialana Boot, received a phone call several hours after the assault and learned that her brother's attacker had pushed him to the ground and kicked him in the head repeatedly. The NYPD quickly apprehended the culprit, who had a lengthy rap sheet that includes at least one prior arrest for assault. Speaking from his hospital bed, Haygood said that he's a lifelong New Yorker and that he doesn't like what's been going on there. He was most likely referencing the alarming uptick in violent crime throughout the Big Apple, which reached its highest levels in decades earlier this year and is especially problematic within the city's transit system. Number 6. Juan Cristalinas Domino's delivery driver Juan Cristalinas was dropping off an order in Los Angeles recently when he saw an elderly man being assaulted and tried to intervene. Both the 49-year-old delivery man and the 76-year-old assault victim were shot. Police found them lying in the street with gunshot wounds. Cristalanis was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead from his injuries. The senior citizen that he sprang into action to help survived. The woman who had placed the Domino's order, Sally Gomez Cox, told ABC News that she was waiting for her food when she heard what sounded like fireworks going off. In a heartfelt message to supporters of a crowdfunding campaign to help pay for Cristinalis's funeral expenses, his daughter-in-law, Daniela Travilla, said that he was trying to do the right thing and paid a very high price for it. She further revealed that her husband's father worked two jobs, working as a mechanic in the evenings to supplement his pizza delivery income. He had a wife, three kids, and three grandkids that he helped support with his earnings. Travilla further described her father-in-law as the kind of person who always stood up for others and wasn't scared of doing the right thing. She wrote that the family was proud of Cristinalis' final act of bravery and kindness, but that they were all devastated by the loss. Speaking with ABC News, the man's son Ivan described his father as a tough-looking man who had the biggest heart. Unfortunately, the suspects are still at large. Number 5. Robert Morrow While driving in heavy traffic along Interstate 85 in Gwinnett County, Georgia recently, Robert Morrow noticed a truck ahead of him that had a loose tie-down strap dragging on the road. He pulled up near the pickup to try alerting the driver, who took the concerned civilian's approach the wrong way. Speaking with WSB-TV, Morrow said that the man moved his truck so close to Morrow's that their side view mirrors touched, leaving a dark streak along the Good Samaritan's truck. Morrow continued driving ahead of the driver he had tried to warn for several miles before pulling off at an exit, at which point he heard the unmistakable sound of a bullet striking the side of his vehicle. He later said that when he looked over, the man in the truck was holding a gun and it was still pointed in Morrow's direction. The driver then rolled up his window and drove away. Police found shell casings at the scene. They identified the alleged shooter as Demetrius Nimmons and found his truck and trailer parked behind a gas station a little while later. The suspect was charged with aggravated assault. Summarizing his thoughts in a local news interview, Morrow said, I'd been upset in traffic, but never so upset I would want to do that to someone. Number 4. Ruben Ruiz Earlier this year, the Texas town of Uvalde was struck by unspeakable tragedy when a crazed gunman entered an elementary school and shot two teachers and 19 students dead. Months later, details of the disturbing shooting are still being revealed, but the police response has fallen under widespread scrutiny. Many believe that if responding officers had taken action sooner, lives would have been saved. 
One cop who quickly fell under harsh criticism was Officer Ruben Ruiz, the now widowed husband of Eva Morellas, who was one of the two teachers murdered that day. He was one of the first officers to arrive at the scene. Members of the public were outraged to see video footage that appeared to show Ruiz nonchalantly checking his cell phone during the massacre. But there are multiple sides to every story, and some have come to the disgraced policeman's defense. Texas State Representative Joe Moody accused the public of being too quick to pass judgment on a man who, in his words, has lost everything. He further insinuated that people had misjudged the video's context and incorrectly painted Ruiz out as malicious or indifferent. And as it turns out, quite the opposite might be true. In a recent Texas Senate hearing, the state's Department of Public Safety Director Steve McCraw said that Ruiz had tried to go into his wife's classroom after hearing gunshots, but that he was stopped and detained by other members of law enforcement who took his gun and removed him from the scene. The hours-long gut-wrenching testimony described how Ruiz was one of several officers who attempted to take action against the shooter, but was stopped by an on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. More details are likely to be revealed as the controversy unfolds, but it's become clear that the reality of what happened may be different from how it seems, even if there were undeniable flaws in how the situation was handled. Number 3. Stuart Jeffrey Toronto-based TikToker Stuart Jeffrey was out and about one day last year when he decided to pay it forward and bought fast food for a homeless man. In a viral post recounting the interaction, Jeffrey explained that he was about to walk into McDonald's to buy a coffee when the man asked him if he could spare some change. He said that he didn't have any change, but that he could buy the man some food if he wanted. The panhandler asked for a coffee and a Big Mac, which Jeffrey gladly went inside and got for him. In his video about the event, Jeffrey said that when he handed the man his order and told him to have a nice day, he responded by saying, a word of advice, I'd lay off the McDonald's. Instead of being offended by the remark, Jeffrey laughed incredulously, stating to his followers, the worst part was I was fat shamed for doing a good deed. It's a good thing that he decided to reflect on the situation with humor rather than be offended. Several commenters were able to relate to the influencer's experience, including a woman who gave a homeless person some food while she was extremely pregnant, only for the man to tell her she walked like a horse. Another social media user named Lauren Ash discussed a time when she gave $20 to a homeless person who responded by saying, don't worry, not all men like skinny women. Number 2. Mom to the Rescue A 28-year-old mom and her two kids were spending the day at the beach in Brigantine, New Jersey recently when she noticed that the children had been overpowered by a large wave. She rushed into the ocean to rescue them when she, too, became overwhelmed by the powerful Atlantic current. There were no lifeguards on duty at the time, but luckily they were doing a training exercise nearby. A beachgoer ran over to them and let them know that a swimmer needed help. By the time the lifeguards got to the scene, one child had been rescued, but the woman and her other child were still in the water. Luckily, both kids were okay and were later reunited with family, but the mom was unresponsive when she was taken to shore. Emergency responders immediately performed CPR and she was taken to a hospital in critical condition. Brigantine Beach Patrol Chief Kip Emick told local station WPVI that a powerful nor'eastern that happened back in May had left numerous underwater hazards, including some deep gullies right off the shore. He pointed out that this is one reason why it's important for people to avoid swimming when there are no lifeguards on duty. While a mom can only be expected to run into a dangerous situation to save her kids, the woman's selfless actions are no less commendable than if a complete stranger had intervened. Hopefully she'll survive and go on to make a full recovery. Number 1. Bison Brawl 
Officials at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming recently announced that a 34-year-old park goer was gored by a bull bison near the famous Old Faithful Geyser. The man and his family, who were visiting from Colorado Springs, were walking on a boardwalk when the animal charged at him and gored him with his horns. Family members remained at the scene while the bull continued to rush at the man, who received an injury to his arm and was taken to a local hospital in an ambulance. Footage of the alarming encounter shows the victim approaching three people who were standing too close to the bison, who was acting visibly aggressive. Although an investigation into the incident is ongoing and the circumstances surrounding the attack are unclear, the video suggests that the man may have been trying to warn the group that they needed to give the animal some space. Park officials reminded the public that it can be extremely dangerous to approach wildlife at Yellowstone. They cautioned visitors to stay at least 75 feet, 23 meters away from bison, elk, bighorn sheep, deer, moose, and coyotes, and to keep a distance of at least 300 feet, 91 meters, from bears and wolves. Local station KKTV reported that this was the second bison attack on a human in the park this year, adding that bison are unpredictable and can run three times faster than people. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get punched by an old lady for trying to help her cross the street or walk out of a store after paying for $50 worth of merchandise only to have a thief rip it from your arms and run away? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.